Hi, I'm Adobe Developer Evangelist Kevin Hoyt. One of the big pieces of news coming out of Adobe Max this year was Adobe's intention to acquire Natobi. Natobi is largely the spearhead behind the project PhoneGap. Now, if you're wondering why that's exciting, let me explain. When you develop for mobile devices today, you have to consider a number of different options. If you're developing for iOS, chances are you're going to want to learn Objective-C. If you're developing for Android, you're going to want to learn Java. And these are already going to present for you two different code bases to cover the majority of mobile use cases. If you're going to use uh, and or develop for a BlackBerry device, you're going to use Java again, but it's actually a completely different API uh, and rather a different subset of Java. So you have yet another code base. And this kind of goes on and on and on for all the different devices you want to reach. One of the interesting things about all these devices, though, is that they have a modern version of WebKit. And WebKit is the rendering engine behind Safari, Google Chrome, and has a lot of the latest and greatest and cutting edge and bleeding edge features of the HTML5 web standards, CSS3, and so on. So why is that great? Well, what PhoneGap does is it lets you take that WebKit rendering instance and use it as a captive view for an application. So you develop with web standards, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but yet are able to actually package that up and deploy it to the application stores as though it were any other native application. Now, along the way, you get lots of different benefits from this. First off, the most obvious one is the capability to use the skills you already know, uh, capability to use that code for one, uh, one code base and be able to reach many devices all at once and potentially even be able to reuse many of those assets and code base features for your web presence, whether that be a desktop or mobile web browser presence. Uh, and so that really in a, enables you a high degree of productivity in producing all kinds of web standards based content. So being able to reuse that content across mul multiple screens. Now you might say, well, why do I want to use a native application and have a web standards view? Isn't that really just what the browser is? And to some degree, that's true. In fact, if you're thinking about building an application uh, for these various devices leveraging PhoneGap, one of the things to consider is whether or not maybe the browser would be a better place. Now, there are certain instances where having a native application provides different features that may be more compelling for you, your, your use cases. So as an example, if you need to provide offline support, right, the browser is really going to rely on you being more connected. Uh, a native application is going to really allow you to leverage a lot of local features to be able to use that data offline. Uh, the capability to use certain native APIs, so if you want to record um, audio or capture camera or video feeds, uh, those types of things that are generally available to native applications uh, become available to you as a PhoneGap application that aren't generally available uh, in the browser. So those are some of the different situations. Another situation, you know, obviously something you should be considering is monetization. If you're building for the browser, you're monetizing those traditional formats. Uh, if you want to be able to sell an application and put that in the various stores and, and market that application and monetize it, then that's something that, that PhoneGap will enable you to do as well. Now, before you get started with uh, building any PhoneGap applications, and we'll take a look at that in, in this series, it's important to consider the actual devices themselves. So the first thing to think about is that when you're a developer, you're going to be looking at your computer screen, and you have a user interface that is, uh, if you're in a darkened office, for example, isn't going to present any glare. But as soon as you take one of these guys out into the world, You've got the sun, you've got clouds, uh, you, maybe you're in uh, an office building where there's a, a foyer and there's all kinds of different reflect, reflections coming off the surface and that makes it very difficult to use. So be considerate of your users. Don't put small fonts in there. Be careful of the contrast to make sure that that's very clear for your users and so on. It's also important to remember that different devices come in different sizes. So as an example, uh, this is a Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, and across the top here, it's 1280, 1,280 pixels. This is a, a little bit older, a Motorola Droid X. And this guy across the top here, if I lay it uh, landscape just like the tablet, is 854 pixels across the top. So how can this guy be 
just a little over half and be 854 pixels, but this entire width be 1280 pixels. And that gets into the pixel density or how, how tightly packed those pixels are into the screen. So you need to consider both the, screen, the, the device you're targeting and the pixel density for that device. If you put something on this guy that's 40 pixels by 40 pixels, it's going to look different uh, on this guy if it's 40 pixels by 40 pixels. So it's important to test. And yet another example of uh, these different devices and how, is how they get used. So this Samsung Galaxy 10.1 is designed to be held in a kind of a landscape mode. But the original Samsung Galaxy Tab is definitely aimed at more of a portrait use case. So how will your user be holding the device? How will they be using the device? And what will they be using it for? When? What time of day? Will they be using it outside? Will they be using it inside? All kinds of different form factors. And then, you know, this Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 is a um, kind of a letterbox form factor. The, uh, by comparison, uh, the iPad is definitely more, uh, more rectangular, more of a square uh, form factor. There's different aspect ratios to consider there as well. So not all the devices are the same, and you need to be very considerate of that for your users. The other thing to consider is that when you're developing on your desktop and you say, oh, yeah, I'm clicking on this button in my user interface, that's great. But on this guy, if I click, I'm using my finger, and my finger is not as accurate as that mouse is. Additionally, my finger comes with a whole hand. Right? And that's going to block out certain portions of the user interface. And so you need to be very careful about where you position the various values you're using, you're displaying to a user, and how they're going to interact with that user interface. I always like to say, finger comes with a hand, as they say. Um, it's also important to remember that uh, this guy, as an iPod Touch, uh, runs iOS and is not this guy, this Droid X, with Android. iOS is not Android. Your users actually go out of their way to learn the different mechanics behind the different user interfaces. So on an iOS device, it's very typical to find a title bar at the top. And usually, as you navigate deeper into screens, there's a back button on the different, uh, on the different applications in that title bar that lets you go back into the different views. That's what you find here. But on an Android device, there is no title bar. And there is no back button on the actual title bar because there is no title bar or in the application itself. In fact, here there's actually a back button that's a hard button, a physical actual button to depress to go back. So your users have figured that out. Right? If I'm an Android uh, customer and I'm using this device, I know that I'm going to click that back button. When you present to me a different user interface, one that you designed for iOS because you think iOS is great and fancy and shiny, which, you know, that may be your preference, but as the Android user, I'm going to get kind of upset because you're telling me that I have to learn an entirely different user interface now. And you see this uh, actually in a couple different form factors. Um, you can see it in, uh, for example, a lot of the, the JavaScript frameworks will actually present title bars and back buttons as iOS, even on Android. So you have to be aware of that and be very careful of that. And even within the kind of context of the hard buttons that the Android devices have, they're not all the same icons, and they're also not all the same order. So again, your user is really going out of their way to figure out how to use that device. Respect that and present them with the user interface as appropriate for their device. So that's a little bit about thinking about these devices, a little bit about PhoneGap. And what we're going to do next is actually tell you how to take PhoneGap and get them on some of these devices and uh, start enabling you to take web standards and deploy mobile applications. We'll see you in the next session.